Welcome, welcome, and thank you for joining me from from Birmingham. Um, I um, have always admired your business from watching it on social media. You have been so successful in promoting what you do. So Cape Malay cooking is something that obviously means a lot to you. Tell us, for people who've never heard about what makes it so different and unique, what gives it that title of Cape Malay cooking? Well, it's our traditional way of cooking and the spices and all the ingredients and all the love that goes into cooking. I'm sure everyone who loves cooking uh, will say that as well. But um, for me, it's just the ingredients and all the flavors that goes in with it together and you know, all the different types of um, spices that we get from all over the world and from uh, way before when uh, South Africa was colonized and all the spices and all the flavors came then. So it's just for me, it's just a, it's just a big party in your mouth. <laughs> so basically it's, it's bringing together, because the Cape was, was a trading hub and it was kind of in, on, on a major trading route. So it's bringing together the cooking from all of those cultures and it's yes. created its own identity now is that yes, kind of how it was. okay yes, great that's definitely the way it was yes so what are the mo the most important spices that you put in your food well the most the, the spices i use every day is um the ones the cumin coriander cardamom stick cinnamon and uh, allspice and that type that you get uh, locally at your at your shops. I don't believe in using exotic spices. I just use everyday spices that you get in your local supermarket. And I think that's what makes it unique. Yeah, because there are some of these, um, you know, big chefs and important, fancy, famous chefs. And you, you, you have to go on a voyage of discovery to just find the ingredients for something really quite simple. Yes, and I don't believe in doing that. I believe um, by your weekly, your monthly ingredients and groceries, and you get on with that. And there's such a vast uh, array of um, food that you can make from simple spices and ingredients as well. Yeah. Do you feel now that you're not living in South Africa, that you feel a sense of responsibility to keep your culture going through your your cooking? Is that kind of something that is important to you? That's very important for me. And that's why I started Cape Malay Cooking. First of all, it was for my family because uh, my children grew up here in the UK. We've been here 20, 21, 22 years in the UK now. And they were little when we came here and I wanted them to identify with their culture and um, where we came from. So, um, yes, that's the way that that's the way Cape Malay cooking started with my children, keeping our heritage alive for my children. And then from there, it just escalated. And it has just escalated. And do your yeah. children still enjoy being in the kitchen or do they just enjoy mom's cooking? No, they all, I can proudly say they're all good cooks and bakers as well. Yeah. Um, so tell me what um, you think has been successful about your business. Do you, because, you know, you've got a very large social media following, um, you know, you clearly people love what you do. And I'm sure you've got an email list that's quite big as well, because I receive some of those emails. But what do you think has been the key to your success in growing a big community around what you do? I think it's cooking the food that our grandmothers used to cook. Because when I started the page, there was lots of people that um, commented on the type of food that I cook and said, oh, they, they forgot about this food. The grandmothers used to cook it. And that's, I mean, that's the way that just uh, one thing is like um, cabbage uh, frigadel, the one with the, you wrapped around the cabbage leaves. And that's something that most people forgot about because they think it's so complicated to make. It's lots of steps and everything. But once I show them the ropes and it's easy method, I don't believe in complicated food and complicated methods. So I make it step by step easy for people to follow. And then, um, yeah, that's that's the way it uh, escalated. And I think also it, it, it appeals to memory and, um, and, and times when we were quite happy. So yeah. that connects with the food and food is a happy thing, especially yeah. I think, um, you know, in, in many cultures around the world, it's sitting around a table and enjoying food together that, and even cooking it together and then enjoying it together. Uh, you know, even just having 
I mean, I suppose many British houses, the kitchen is in a different room, whereas where we kind of grew up, it was quite a social thing. You were either brying or the kitchen is kind of open plan yes. or it's got a table in it and everyone's there together. Yes, that's the way I grew up. We had a fairly large um, kitchen and dining room and it was interconnected. You know, the dining room table, you could see it from the kitchen and vice versa. So, yeah, that was the central room of our home, the kitchen, dining room. Everyone gathered there. My mother cooked one side and the guests, no, somehow we had a sitting room as well, but the guests somehow just came in the kitchen and the dining room and they all just sat there and spoke and talked and, and socialized from there. So that's what stick to my mind and that's what I'm trying to do to my children as well. The, our, our kitchen is very small here. I'm sure you know the kitchens are very small here. So yeah, we're trying to do our best to um, to carry on with our way of life that we had in South Africa, where food is concerned. And do your do your kids um, eat? Um, do they prefer Cape Malay food, or do you think they prefer British food? Um, they've got a mixed palate, so um, they prefer my food as well but not uh, not every day I would think the the taste buds has changed a bit but they do prefer our cultural and traditional food especially when it's cold weather and you know the brides they love brying and yeah <laughs> um what do you think um is um is the kind of the connector um when it comes to food do you think it is the flavors and the or do you think it's about the community I think it's both Okay. Yeah, it's both the flavors. Um, you can't take one away from the other one. I think the community is there. Uh, like we grew up, everyone was uh, everyone's friend and everyone popped in and everyone, the um, meals we shared with everyone. So I think that is the essence of our lives is yeah, the community you... and the flavors and the food. So you grew up in a house where um, obviously you were also, um, you know, you learned from your mother and probably grandmother and they were, it, it was quite a, it was quite a tradition to, to cook and bake. Today, do you still use those old recipes or are you trying new ones and adapting those old ones? I'm very traditional, so I'm sticking to my recipes and the way I made it. Although my husband, he encouraged me to try different recipes and different ways of cooking. I mean, my children as well, they encourage me because in our social media and the internet. So you see different ways of cooking and maybe uh, simplified versions. And then I try to inculcate that as well. But um, my main way, I stick to my traditional cooking. Oh, that's and ways of cooking yeah 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 well it's nice to keep that alive um so you've also got children's books what's the difference really when you're preparing a children's book um to an adult's book what do you focus on um do you focus on things that you know children will prefer eating or the simplicity really in the in the recipe it's both actually because i see from my grandchildren i've got eight grandchildren so i can see from the what they like to eat and I cook regularly with them, so I can gauge from them what, and I try to simplify recipes for them, make it colorful and interesting for them to follow as well. So it's a very really simple recipe, simple um, recipes that I use for the children. And what about your baking? Now I, oh, it looks terribly decadent, your baking and so tasty. So tell me um, which is your favorite? And what kinds of, do you prefer to cook or do you prefer to bake? <laughs> I, I, no, I don't have a preference really. Uh, I cook every day and uh, we tend to have some sort of a dessert at least every second day as well. So it's both really for us, for me. Well, I think I've, I've always thought of, of baking as more a technical science because, you know, you have to be quite specific and precise with measurements to a degree, way more though than cooking. Is, yes. is that, because in cooking you can kind of taste and go, oh, I need a bit more of that, yeah, or yeah. a bit more of that. But I also think it takes confidence to do that because I don't have that confidence when it comes to to, to cooking at all. Um, do you think there is a confidence about cooking something with, with just being a little bit more free with your ingredients? Yes, you, I tend to, yes, that's true that you say yes. Um, you can experiment a lot of cooking and whereas for baking you tend you have to stick to a recipe and i always encourage people because there's some people that get back to me and say oh the recipe didn't work 
And I asked, did you use the correct measurements? Did you use a cup? Some people will use a, a teacup or a mug. So I tend to advise people, buy a cheap set of measuring cups and, and teaspoons or spoons, and then to use that. And then at the end of the day, you'll get the perfect result. And just follow the recipe, really. So do you have to make them a thousand times before you put them in a book or publish them on your blog? Or do you kind of just make it once or twice? I make it at least twice. Sometimes once when it comes out right, I'll I'll do I'll do it immediately. I'll put it up on my blog or on social media. But um, there's sometimes I would like to tweak a recipe a bit and just to make it more friendly, user friendly as well. Do you think that you're starting to introduce more British people to um, this wonderful cultural food? Yes, there is quite a few um, people, British people, that's interested. Definitely, yes, yeah. I suppose they're also a little bit more adventurous when it comes to um, they're the kind of people who like to try other cultural foods um, and not just the, you know, the fish and chips or the the pizza or, you know, the, the korma from the Indian takeaway. I think it's yes. someone who's prepared to try another culture's food. But it is mm. it, 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 it's not spicy, spicy. It's just flavored spicy. Is that more it's of a that's the way that's the, the perfect way of describing is it is it's, it's flavor spicy um i don't like spicy like um, chili spicy food and i think our Cape malay culture um we don't get like spicy food it's more flavorful yes yeah yeah so tell me the process of putting the book together the the books that you've put together already did you just choose a theme or a uh, or how did you select those recipes to go into your recipe book from the first book, I, I chose the most popular recipes that was on Facebook at that time. So I chose that recipes that go that to go in the book. And then did you approach somebody like a local printer or how did you go about doing the actual layout and all of that process? Well, this book I did myself, but before that I approached a big publishing house in Cape Town who I got a contract with. Wow. That was in 2014. But unfortunately, due to personal circumstances that time, my mother became ill and she eventually died that year. Mm. I couldn't commit to the uh, uh, timelines. And then it was mutually um, cancelled, the contract. And then my husband actually felt sorry for me. <laughs> so he decided he's going to do extra, extra shifts and he's going to work to help pay for the printing of the books so all this whole book I put together myself I did the layout myself I did lots of research I came up I came eventually I chose InDesign for the layout and after lots of research and asking of the printers um, this book I had printed in China so at that time it was cheaper and luckily the lady who I dealt with she gave me lots of advice as well and it yeah, and eventually it was um, self-published, and my husband paid for the books to be printed and all that. And like you say, the rest is history. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful! It's a family affair because you would have tested the food on your family as well, so they all had the opportunity to try all the recipes. Yeah, and then your husband worked um, extra to be able to afford to do that. I think that's just the most wonderful family story to make something happen you all came together to support yeah to and it yeah my children they took some of the photos and my daughter um i've got one daughter living in cape town she came down uh, for a month or so and she helped me baked and and did all everything with me uh, so it was a family affair and without them i don't think it would have been possible that's fantastic mm. what do you think is the most difficult part because once you've written a book it becomes really tricky because it's a business. It becomes a business. What do you think has been the most difficult part of that business journey for you? Um, I would think marketing, marketing the books. At the end of the day, you've got Facebook and all that, but not everyone is going to go um, and just buy it. You need to get more clients every time. And just marketing the books in the shops, bookshops and all that. Initially, it, it um, took a lot a lot of effort and a lot of time and I did everything myself I went to Cape Town for a while and I went around bookshops and and trying to persuade people to take the book and to stock it at the local bookshops because we went to the big bigger shops and they um 
point blankly refused. She had to go have the distributor and an agent and all that, and I didn't add anything like that. So all the local small bookshops, they took the books and um, they stopped it. Wow. And for that, I'm very thankful. Yeah, that was the biggest uh, uh, complication for me. Yeah, and I think, well, is there still an appetite in South Africa for people to... Um to try traditional foods and eat traditional foods do you think there's still that interest yes definitely there is okay. that interest definitely yes there is especially amongst the um i think the middle age or the 30 to 30 onwards yeah there's that interest definitely because I, I i feel sad sometimes when cultures around the world kind of vanish you know where something traditional gets kind of taken over by modern living and um and that gets lost but uh, but people like you keeping culture alive i think is yeah. incredibly valuable and food plays such an important part of it does yes yeah. i think once people get, tend to get married and have their own families they become they become more traditional and that's the time they go back and oh what can i cook that my mother or my grandmother used to cook Oh. So yeah, for the younger ones, not so much. Um, they more into the fast food and the easy food and the convenience food. <laughs> yeah, stick it in the microwave. That's all they yeah. care about. Um, so tell me now about the books that you have out, and um, uh, yeah, yeah, just tell us a bit about those. Well, it's this one is my first one. Cape okay. Cooking and other delights. Yeah, mm -hmm. that one, and then I've got the children's cookbook. This is um, Cape Malay Little Chef's cookbook. This okay. is a two I have currently. And then I've got another four ebooks, which I have available online as well. I'm trying to get those a few printed because there has been, there's been people that have been asking me for printed copies. So I'm, I've sourced a local printer here. Who I'm we're just waiting for my supply. Then I'll have the hard copy in that as well. And tell me the, the, the topics of those ones, those ebooks um one is uh, just uh, it's just um i've broken it up uh one is just food other one is desserts and the other one is savories and then i've got one for bakes and biscuits and that type of food oh i'm so pleased <laughs> it's lunchtime <laughs> <laughs> and um and where can people find you so you're on facebook what is your facebook page um at uh facebook.com at cake malay cooking Deluxe. cake malay cooking Okay, and you're on Instagram? Instagram, same, Cat Malay Cooking. And I see that you're on TikTok. How very modern of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out TikTok at the minute, so I'm not very good at TikTok. <laughs> but that's amazing. People can go and find you there, and maybe just more followers will give you the confidence to do yeah. more fancy things. Or I have no idea either. But I must say, I have found amazing recipes on TikTok. So I think it is a platform that I think you could do quite yeah. well on. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. My children, my daughter, one daughter in particular, she loves the TikTok recipes as well. <laughs> yeah. And, and mm. yeah, I think it's a brilliant way to do that. And what is the website? Tell us the website. It's www.katemalaycookingdelights.com. Long right. word, but katemalaycookingdelights.com lovely lovely that's fantastic and if people are in south africa you say you've got a daughter there is are, she, are you able to um ship books from there or is it just currently available she's got, no no she's got a supply of books there so if people are interested they usually i gave i give her details and she bakes as well she does the uh, most beautiful cakes and um, savories so um she uh, i usually pass people on to her in cape town and what is, uh, so she's in Cape Town and so she yeah. takes contracts or uh, commissions for cakes and yes, things like yes. that. Tell us about how we can get hold of her because there might be people who are interested. It's also Cape underscore Malay underscore delights. Ah, so it's all in the family. It's all intertangled, yeah, all family, yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. And if somebody said to you, what is your favorite Cape Malay main dish and dessert, what would you say? Um, I'm very partial to fricadelle with oh. all the same, all the sides to that. And um, the dessert, I like any type of cake, but my main dessert would be um, a trifle. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's fantastic. 
Oh, Salva, it's such a delight. It is a delight to chat to you. Um, and if I'll put all the links in the show notes. And um, please stay in touch with us and let us know how you get on and maybe come on in the future and share your next book with us because that would be amazing. So um, thank you very much for sharing your knowledge and passion and your cooking and your culture with us. Thank you very much for having me.